All right, so I got to make this quick because I have a lot of prepping to do this weekend. Guys, it has been a roller coaster of a day in the open source intelligence world. We have Melanie Jolie, Canada's foreign minister, coming out today and sending out an emergency message advising Canadians to get the hell out of Israel while you still can. Get a load of this. With a heightened risk of attacks on Israeli territory, the regional security situation remains highly volatile and could escalate without notice. We've increased our risk level to avoid all travel to Israel and the West Bank. Canadians should consider leaving by commercial means. This same warning was echoed by Norway, India, Germany, France, several other countries advising their population to get out of Dodge while they can. Recall, Canada sent out a similar message around six months ago, but that one was strictly for Lebanon. Now, the Level 4 travel advisory has been imposed in Israel, which means that they're expecting a direct retaliation, not just from Hezbollah, not just from the proxies, but from the Iranians. Every intelligence agency and open source intelligence and Joe Biden himself is saying that this attack from Iran is likely to come very soon, if not within the next 48 hours. Now, granted, they've been saying that for two weeks, and there's a couple of reasons, but before I get into that, before we talk all about the other news, it, it's been a roller coaster of a day, I tell you. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, but I gotta get through it quick. Isn't it funny how, just three months ago, I was saying, hey, they're gonna go into Iran before the election hits, here we are. Already, they've managed to shift the focus from Hamas and Hezbollah onto the Iranian threat. And was it by something that Iran did? No, it was because Israel attacked Iranian soil, an Iranian consulate in Syria, okay? And now suddenly the focus in all of the Western legacy media, as well as the uh, American military, is now getting ready to deploy more forces to the region, not because Iran attacked Israel, but because Israel attacked Iran. And now they're awaiting a response. And Israel has said, if you attack us, we're gonna attack your nuclear facilities. Iran has said, if you do that, if you use this E-bomb, electromagnetic pulse bomb on us, we are going to target your nuclear facility, rendering a large part of your landmass uninhabitable for many generations. So. We have a good old Mexican standoff. The stakes get higher and higher and higher. My friends, gold was sending out some weird signals today. We are talking about a 100-point rise. In dollar equivalents, that's nearly $800 billion. Then you know what happened? The big money came in, the plunge protection came, team came in, and they crashed that sucker right in its tracks. They brought that sucker back down to the price it was at the beginning of the day. I don't know if this was a short squeeze or if the shorts came in afterwards to paper over the gains that were made, but we had gold run up to 2430 today, okay? 2430, which is insane considering it was 1850 just six months ago. And I'm not gonna explain why that's such a significant move because I've been beating that horse to death every single day. What we do know is that inflation is back, the price of oil and gold are skyrocketing alongside a skyrocketing dollar as well, and that was a terrifying thing today. Usually when you see those crazy increases in the price of oil and gold, the dollar drops because there's an inverse relationship between the dollar and the price of gold. However, today, what did you see? The dollar went up 1%, gold at one point was up nearly 3% which means that in real terms, the price of gold was up nearly 4%. That's a massive move for gold. That is telling you that big money expects things to go bad this weekend. And the dollar rising means that people around the world and countries around the world, they're currently vying for dollars. Because in spite of what people are saying about BRICS, and in spite of what we all know about the dollar on its way out, in terms of the uh, being the global reserve currency. Right now, it's still the cleanest shirt in a dirty laundry basket, and that is why people are flooding to it, because they know if World War III starts, I mean, I'm talking about a new front opening up over the weekend, 
then all of those other currencies are at risk of crashing. Whereas the dollar, that's going to be the last one to crash. If it goes down right now, that is. We have Russia right now. The UN spokesperson for Russia basically said they now demand Ukraine's unconditional surrender. Unconditional surrender. These are terms and demands that have never been levied before since the conflict began. At all points, it was about peace negotiations. Now they've outright said, at the UN no less, that they demand complete and total surrender of the Ukrainian forces. That is big. On the same day, we have French troops allegedly arriving in Ukraine. 100 troops, a tripwire of sorts, or just the head of the camel, as I've heard it said. If you let the camel's head come into the tent, I heard Scott Ritter say this the other day, I think it's a great saying, then you're going to get the whole camel in there eventually. So what they're doing is they're getting their feet wet and eventually they're going to go all in. It doesn't matter if you send one NATO troop in uniform or 10,000, it's all the same. NATO is now getting ready to take up the reins of this conflict in Ukraine and now the Russians are demanding an unconditional surrender. They're targeting heavily the Ukrainian Infrastructure, power plants have been completely destroyed in some parts. They destroyed the largest natural gas reservoir in Ukraine, targeting it several times. This is causing natural gas spike, uh, spikes in Europe. We're also seeing blackouts uh, throughout Ukraine, as well as evacuation orders in many major cities. Okay, so the situation has just gone from, you know, 90 to 100 in the last 24 hours all around the world. And now you have the U.S. military getting ready to deploy more forces to the Middle East. I'm telling you, man, this is a good weekend to be a prepper. I mean, just this alone was stunning today. I could not believe it. You know, we were shooting a skit here today, and it was kind of a silly skit while gold was rising. And I had to ask myself, what the hell am I doing? Like, is this what I should be committing my precious time to right now? making these silly skit videos. They're funny. I love to do them because we like to have fun on the channel. But today I was torn because I'm shooting this video and we're, I'm looking on my phone every few minutes and I'm seeing gold going up and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Sure enough, it crashed by the end of the day because the big money came in and they papered it over. As you can see here, it was up to like 224.50 and then it crashed. Okay, back down to be before where it started at the beginning of the day. But when you look back over three months, what we've done here is we've hit a new plateau. So it's barely, you know, put a dent in the actual increase in the price point since January 2024. So man, that is absolutely insane. The first French soldiers had ar have arrived in Slavyansk. Okay, so this is a pretty big story. If it is true, according to preliminary data, the first batch of the Foreign Legion consists of 100 people who are specialists in artillery reconnaissance as well as an engineering group whose specialization is fortification and the construction of field fortification. Not looking good. What do we got going on here with the Iron Dome? So it's expected that right now Hezbollah and the IRGC back militias have basically been uh, trying to overwhelm the Iron Dome system to try to diminish it in terms of its capabilities. The idea is with these missile defense systems, they're very expensive. It costs about, I think, like half a million dollars for each interceptor. And the rockets that Hezbollah and these uh, proxy groups are shooting are probably, you know, in the 50,000 range at best. So if it's costing you, if you, you have a 1 to 10 attritional ratio, you know, you can only sustain that for so long. But what they're really trying to do here is diminish the capability of the Iron Dome. Because I would presume, like any piece of military equipment, you keep firing it, you got to do maintenance. Uh, maybe, you know, something malfunctions. There's a greater uh, a potential for malfunction. So the more they do this, they're softening up the surface so that when the Iranians come in with their heavy duty equipment, their ballistic missiles, their cruise missiles, possibly hypersonic missiles, 
by that time, the Iron Dome is going to be diminished. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be entirely diminished. I'm sure they have all kinds of contingency plans and uh, redundancies in place for this eventuality. I hope that they prepared for this. It could be, though, you know, we are so brazen and arrogant here in the West that it could just be that we thought that we could poke I'm not sure what we're going to call the Iranians yet, the, the Persian cat or something. You know, we talk about poking the bear, poking the dragon, uh, maybe the lion. I know the Persians like the lions. Uh, poking the lion and just expecting no response. But now the Iranians are saying, okay, we're going to call your bluff. And the Israelis have been freaking out for the last two weeks because I don't think they have a plan for when they actually go to war with the Iranians. I think they just think they're going to fly F-35s over there and blow up these uh, bases with these 2,000 pound JDAM bombs. But when that doesn't work, what are they gonna do is the question. And when Iran launches everything at Israel, what are they gonna do then is the question. Then is America gonna be brought into this conflict? We are going to need a pretty sizable event that can pull on the heartstrings of American people to compel them to enter a war right now. It's gonna be very difficult to do. I don't know what card you could possibly play to invoke that kind of patriotic sentiment right now that would be required to get behind a war in the Middle East because quite frankly, the support for Israel is not there like it used to. Maybe a few years ago, maybe on October 8th it was there, but because of the events that have happened since now and then, People aren't going for it. And of course, everybody's broke, okay? So people are looking around. I went and watched the movie Civil War last night. I don't care what anybody says. I think that is an American classic. I'm gonna be going and doing a complete review on it because there's a lot of things that reviewers are missing about that film. One of the things that I loved about it, and this is something that people actually hate about it, because a lot of people went in there wanting it to be a political movie and looking for the political messages. And I think people were upset that it's, you know, because a lot of people, they want to, to either have something to throw poo at or they have, want something to celebrate. But this movie didn't do that. And I'm going to tell you why. And I haven't seen any critic necessarily talk about it and break it down like how I'm going to break it down. Just like I broke down Leave the World Behind, I got a lot of things to say about this movie. So stay tuned for that. Israel is getting prepared to learn remotely. Schools are issuing messages that are sparking panic. So they're getting ready for the next lockdown. Isn't that convenient how the last few years of lockdown condition us all for times of war almost as if uh, i'm not gonna say it you know and it's funny because right now the teachers i don't know if the teachers are striking where you guys are everybody is striking right now because nobody's making enough money but quite frankly and i'm sure there's great teachers out there but some of the teachers nowadays just completely suck okay and they're just collecting a paycheck and in some ways i don't blame them and i'm going off on a tangent here i wasn't supposed to do this because we got better things to do like prepping for world war three but I got to say that it's to the point where we're getting ready to pull the kids out of the school because they're not learning anything. I mean, you look at what the Chinese kids are learning by grade two. In the public schools in Canada, and I assume in the United States as well, I mean, it is just, it is terrifying what we are setting ourselves up for, okay? The movie Civil War was one of the most prescient films. This was a stale I took of the movie that I've seen in a long time. And not even prescient. Like, we're talking about... You know, it predicts what could happen tomorrow, never mind off in a few years. It is incredibly myopic in terms of the, the view and the vision that it tries to encapsulate. Right now, we have a lot of U.S. assets and more moving into the Middle East, getting ready to jump into the defense of Israel. Joe Biden basically today said that we will support Israel we will help defend Israel no matter what. You know, so in spite of all this talk about, you know, trying to rein in Netanyahu, it, it's all just two-faced, speaking with a forked tongue. He's basically saying that Iran is expected to attack sooner than later and that he advises them to don't. Don't as in don't attack. But it's, it, I don't know, just the body language, it, it almost looks as though the decision has been made in a way that they are in fact going to do this. And if they do that, man, holy shit. 
Holy shit, we are we are screwed. Now this fellow here, Rob Kintz, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know this guy for a hole in the ground, but he breaks down the the uh, the short squeeze on gold today. A nuclear explosion of short paper dumped on both gold and silver before Friday's close. They cannot allow Friday $30 silver and $24.50 gold closes or all hell breaks loose in both bonds and the dollar next week. It's the free market against them for all the marbles. So they came in there, they papered it over. Remember, it's other countries and other central banks that are buying up the physical stuff, okay? This paper, money stuff, Rafi Farber, he came in here and explained it. I'm probably gonna have him back right now. He's probably more concerned about prepping because his country is about to go to war. But uh, we gotta get him back just to explain what's going on because he did predict, to his credit, he said that this was gonna happen right around now, that everything was gonna culminate right around now and that we were gonna see gold start to go parabolic and that is what we are seeing. We have a Ukrainian uh, spokesperson here basically saying that they may have to uh, accelerate the evacuations from the Kharkov region, we're not gonna get into that. And this is Melanie Jolie saying that with heightened risk of attacks, everybody needs to get the hell out of Dodge in Israel, okay? So let me just see if there's other news that I haven't covered yet. All I can say though with inflation, inflation is only going to go up. If Biden starts tapping the strategic oil reserve again, you know it's a state of emergency. They've already said that they're not gonna start refilling it. That can probably only mean one thing, that they're gonna start depleting it once again because they're right now they're in a price war of the Saudis. The Saudis want oil to be 85 bucks. So if the US starts depleting the strategic oil reserve again, the Saudis will just cut production even more. So right now they're trying to keep it in that sweet spot, 85 to 90 bucks, okay? But what happens if there is a war, they close the Strait of Hormuz, Iran starts firing missiles all over the place, all hell could totally break loose and as Salente says, we're going to see oil north of 130 bucks a barrel. And when that happens, that's gonna just crash all of the financial markets, gonna crash equities because what are people gonna buy? What are people gonna be able to afford to buy when, because the main driver of inflation is the price of oil. Everything runs on oil. Everything runs on oil. Everything you buy at the store because the tractors, are powered by the oil. It's all based uh, based on petrol fuels and petrol chemicals. Everything, the entire civilization of human beings runs on oil. The higher the price of oil goes, the harder it is for the economy. And when you're already stuck with people who've popularized these videos complaining about the price of everything, and while I do agree that uh, you know things aren't as bad as they were back when I was a kid, and that's mostly because of technological deflation has offset some of those things. I will say that it is becoming unmanageable to live in Canada and most Western nations. You're, being, you're having your dollars purchasing power diminished by the day and uh, they have no solution. Guys, they have no solution, just like they didn't have a solution in Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and Ukraine. They don't have a solution for the financial thing. They're just hoping they can continue to kick the can down the road. Lithuania is preparing for war. All civilians in Lithuania may join military reserve units. They're establishing a permanent military training center which will operate nationwide to prepare personnel to serve during a real war. A total of 27 command headquarters that are due to be fully operational next year will be set up in the major cities of NATO member country in an effort to prepare the public to send a deterrent signal to the enemy. And of course, we know that Germany is getting ready to complete the deployment of a brigade of troops to that region. Kiev is backtracking its promise to the guys who've been on the front lines for over two years. They're no longer going to be demobilizing. In fact, they're going to be remobilizing. As part of this new remobilization bill that they were proposing, they were supposed to be relieving a lot of people who've been on the front line of duty, but they were going to mobilize like another 500,000 guys. What they're going to do now is they're saying, and they, they changed it right at the last minute, we're not going to be relieving you of your duty, and we're still gonna be mobilizing another 350,000 
people. They are getting desperate, all right? So this is why they're relying on the French who are going in there, and the French Navy is also preparing for war. France has shifted its naval posture from intercepting drug traffickers and po poachers to now training for a conventional war. This is according to Rear Admiral Jacques Millard, who is talking to Politico. Millard commands France's only carrier battle group built around the nuclear-powered Charles de Gaulle. He spoke about the changes in an exclusive interview that he provided on Wednesday. As I indicated, Russia destroyed the largest natural gas storage facility in Europe. So that's going to drive natural gas prices up. And this is different, of course, because the Ukrainians and the Russians, they've had terms with respect to the delivery of natural gas through the pipeline, through Ukraine to Europe. That they are now targeting the natural gas in Europe tells you that this war is escalating in a bad way. They also did a successful ICBM test today. I'm not sure if I have a video of that one. I don't think I have that one up here. But basically, it was an ICBM test of a Yars uh, mobile platform missile. And uh, this is just another, you know, these are routine tests of missiles. However, again, we don't know if they're notifying the United States of that. And there's always a risk that the United States or Europe interprets this as the real deal. And somebody miscalculates and we get ourselves into an unexpected nuclear war. As previously indicated, Germany, India, Norway, several other countries are calling on their nationals to leave Iran. Foreman, uh, the German foreman, the German Foreign Office, conflating two terms there, cites risks of sudden escalation and potentially, potential arbitrary arrests, advising immediate departure. So they're worried that there is going to be a bit of a xenophobic crackdown in the country against Westerners. It's going to be interesting to see if the Mossad and the CIA are able to destabilize or at least initiate some destabilization attempt inside <clears throat> Iran or Lebanon. That is probably the only way they're going to win this conflict, if you can say win or diminish the IRGC, is to cause some sort of civil unrest within the country. And, you know, to our credit, we are pretty good at doing that. The U.S. is also going to be deploying forces to the Middle East in response to Iranian tensions. Of course, it's now Iran that is the focus of attention. In response to escalating tensions with Iran and the possibility of an imminent attack, the United States has begun moving additional military assets and reinforcements into the Middle East. This deployment signals heightened readiness and preparedness to counter any potential threats from Iran. So we're talking about something that could lead to a full-scale war. If that happens, all of those preps that are still appreciating in value that you've accumulated over the past few years, and every single prep, it's important to remember that you've purchased through the last few years is only going up in price. Uh, uh, the price increases for my distributors now, they've just become commonplace. I used to you know, uh, talk about them in videos because it was shocking to me to see a 10, 15% increase in price overnight. But now it is so commonplace, especially with food, and that's only going to increase because we have a whole uh, slew of climactic issues coming our way that are going to lead to inflation as well this year. Uh, th this is an investment, okay? And right now I would say it's an even better investment than precious metals. When gold and silver are so high like they're doing right now, I'm scared to get into something that, in spite of some people saying it's going to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, I've heard. I mean, Farber thinks it's going to 30 or 60,000 if the whole thing crashes. But uh, you cannot go wrong just stockpiling food, beans, bullets, band-aids. Those three things, and uh, you can never go wrong because they're always going to have value. And they're probably right now the cheapest you are going to get them until we have some sort of technological revolution, which in the thick of war, I don't see how that can possibly happen. So we do have the commander of a central command in Israel today. The U.S. Uh, CENTCOM commander is there. He's staying for another night. Perhaps he is acting as a shield of sorts to prevent the Iranians from doing anything. But what that signals is that they do have a plan to align themselves firmly and unequivocally with the Israelis in face of the uh, 
Iranian threat. So that's what's going down, guys. We got Russia going ahead with the nukes in space. Now, they've been talking about how uh, we don't plan on putting nuclear weapons in space. In fact, the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister, Sergei Rabkov, denies the nuclear nuclearization in space. However, on the same day, Putin gave instructions to the government's space corporation, Roscosmos and Rosatom, to allocate funds for the creation of a space nuclear energy program. Now they're saying it's going to be nuclear weapons, but as I, or nuclear power generation. But as I've said before, if you're putting fissionable materials in space, the other side must interpret that as the weaponization of space. Even if you're putting a nuclear power station in space, they're saying they're going to they're talking it up as well. We're just going to put stuff on the moon. But the United States is going to interpret that differently, okay? And they're going to interpret it as a threat to national security, which in turn is going to start a space nuclear arms race. The UK opposition, leader of the Labour Party, Keir Steimer, came out today, Starmer, I should say, came out today and said that he promises to not only bolster Ukraine's nuclear deterrence, but he will use it if necessary. <clears throat> Russian pundits are warning about the imminent threat of nuclear conflict in Europe. They're saying that the United States may not have to worry anymore, but Europe is about to get nuked and potentially lose 250 million people. F-16s are now earmarked. We have 19 coming from Denmark, 24 from the Netherlands, and 22 from Norway. And it's very likely that most of them will be flown by American pilots. Guys, I got other things I have to do. This is a weekend of preparedness for me. I hope you're using your time wisely. The markets are telling us what's coming, so heed the warning signals and just keep on getting ready. If you want to get gear up and support the channel, check out CanadianPreparedness.com. We still got inventory, but if shit hits the fan, it's only going to last 24 hours, so I'd encourage you to stock up while you can. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.